All right. Have a... So, uh, Malcolm, I understand that you are a uh, army veteran from World War II. Uh, yes, I, I was drafted at uh, uh, twenty first or something like that. Uh, that's it. Oh, have it! I can't remember the exact. <laughs> that's, okay. that's all right. But were you uh, 18 years old when you were drafted? Oh no, I was. Uh, I finished school, and uh, I'd been working for three years as a freelance artist and teacher. And then suddenly I got draft notice and had to report. And you were you were drafted into the army. I was drafted into the army during which war? Uh, World War Two. Okay. Okay. Not the first. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> not that old yet. <laughs> All right. And then uh, from that I went to uh, Fort Dix, New Jersey, and they were. Uh, that was sort of an exception center, and they decided where to send you. You spent, usually spent about uh, two days, and then you were shipped off somewhere to some other post. To and, start basic training? In my case, they, uh, they interview you and decide what to <clears throat> branch you should be in. and. Uh, when I said artists, I immediately said camouflage. That's all I could see with big tanks being uh -huh. painted strange colors. And I said, no, no, I, I really am a photographer too. And with that, oh, good. So I then was kept with a group to go to Fort Monmouth, New Jersey, to start a photo company. And the army uh, sort of lost us, <laughs> and uh, we ended up, uh, I spent a month at Fort, uh, Fort Dix. Are you, when you said lost, are you saying that the army just lost track of your battalion or your company? Well, they lost track of the people that they were, had been saving. This was a relatively to, new to unit. To start this uh, okay. company. Okay. Uh -huh. Picking different people who had a photographic background. Okay. And uh, we were all anxious to get going because Fort Dix, I think our camp was the bottom of an old lake. <laughs> <laughs> and my experience, the most horrible thing is when the day I was drafted and uh, went through from early morning until it was part of the turn dark. New York City, and we were finally <clears throat> on 34th Street. We were marched over to Penn Station to the train at about 5.15 or so. I looked around and I saw all these people who were leaving their office and going home, which left a very deep impression on me. They were going home and I was going <laughs> into the Army. Yeah. Got down there and uh, you, they had bedding. You went through and came out of a tent with your hands out, arms and hands out, and they would then throw blanket sheet and so on, one on top of the other, and pillows and mattress, and uh, cover your face, and then turn you and start wow. you walking. And that was sort of slushy, and muddy. And we had duck boards, and they were slippery. And of course, I slipped, and all my laundry went into the bank of the mud. So that was my first experience. Wow! In the army. That was a great impression, huh? <laughs> yeah, a terrible impression. But that I—I uh, I overcame it. We finally. Uh, it gets to be such a long story of getting here or there, trying to get into this photo outfit that uh, I was sort of assigned to, 
and I ended up uh, Fort Bliss, Georgia, and uh, they had gotten a different group in, and they'd filled all the vacancies, so they didn't know what to do with us other than make us truck drivers. Oh no! So I drove, learned to drive one of those great big six wheelers, and uh, but I was also assigned as the uh, I drove the command car with the the captain. Okay. And I chewed his ear every time we went somewhere <laughs> to get out of this. And uh, finally I did, uh, and I started teaching us photography, except that became a bore because they had a one, one Mitchell camera and uh, no film for it other than the sort of a test thing. They had one camera for all the soldiers? Hmm? One camera for all the soldiers? But, uh, yes, that was a <laughs> movie camera. Oh, wow. And uh, But we would come in after breakfast. We had a unit of four to work this thing. And we would get the tripod out, and the camera came in about four boxes, okay. four suitcases, and we would put the whole thing together and then thread the film through the camera and get it to run a bit, and it was time to eat. <laughs> so we took it all apart, put it back, <laughs> and it went day after day. <laughs> and finally, uh, I got to know people rather quickly in the Army. You were, all of you were alone. You'd find somebody and you'd attach to them. And a couple of us uh, became friends. And uh, <clears throat> there was a man, uh, a second lieutenant, who was going to Iceland. This was before we were in the fighting war. And uh, we decided to get out of this. We volunteered to go to Iceland. So, and that meant they'd taken out of the selective service. Wow. And uh, we were in regular army for one year. What year was this that you went to Iceland? Uh, I was in, well, I was only in Iceland for six, seven seven months, but uh, that was a, an experience that uh, we went up as a convoy, uh, a battleship led the procession. Mm -hmm. They had th three destroyers, and uh, we went to Iceland. And I can remember going into the harbor of Reykjavik, uh, the uh, waves going ashore were white tops setting, and, and there was a wonderful green grass, and it, it looked just like a lawn going up to the blackish uh, land. And <laughs> we finally, when we got there, we were in these open landing craft, and uh, Waves are over you. By the time you hit the shore, you were soaking wet. <laughs> that wasn't a great experience either. And this wonderful green grass was stiff as a, a broomstick. <laughs> they were hard. It grew in the salt water. <laughs> but from that, we spent about uh, oh, two weeks traveling back, living on the boat. So every morning you got up with nice warm, dry clothes, you got in the landing craft, a wave come over uh. and you put it down. You spent the day, day about <laughs> six o'clock running around with your camera photographing what was happening. So what what was happening while you were in Iceland? Well they were putting the base together. Okay. And uh, before we left as you know, they, the way RA does work sometimes. As they, uh, they lost all of our equipment. <laughs> so, just before, we spent two, uh, 
about three days before we went aboard to leave, going around New York, all of us assigned to buy enlargers, tanks, uh, chemicals, and so on, and then to put the lab together. We got up there with no sinks, so we made a sink with a uh, canvas top of a truck, around two before us, a little hole, and uh, coated it with tar and uh, put a line on it. And there was a lot of water and ice, a little streams here and there. Mm -hmm. And our lab was right on the edge once, so the pipe went down and all the stuff went stream, went away. Uh, so I was sort of building a dark rooms in the hole. But okay. And it was an interesting time. The women, the uh, people were not very friendly because they were uh, inclined toward the Germans. Really? Because the Germans had done so much for them. And they uh, brought the uh, irrigated uh, the little trenches of water down and did a lot of things. Right. To improve their life. Okay. Uh, and uh, women were absolutely forbidden to be with a, a soldier. We walked around, we had steel helmets on and uh, a gun at our side. And uh, it took a little while before man and woman gets together. Yeah. <laughs> Just a rather. And I was sent out to buy a stationery and stuff, a little stationery store, and uh, a couple of nice-looking Icelandic girls that worked there. And, uh, and we talked several times, and finally I asked them if they'd like to have dinner or a movie, and uh, no one <laughs> was going to do that. <laughs> and this went on for a while, and then one day I was in there, and one of the girls said, uh, would you? come to our house and uh, yes, and get some of your friends. So we went out and got bottles of wine and some cake and crackers or whatever it was. And uh, <clears throat> we, we had a pass, all of us had passes as press photographers. So we didn't <laughs> have to get, we could get passed on page and so on. Okay. So we ended up, uh, we took our truck and left it with the MPs and took our cameras out of the cases and filled them with the food and all. And then we walked up and a uh, well, row of houses and uh, they're all bright and lit except one. And we figured that's the one. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure enough. And we had a very interesting time okay. talking to the girls and so on. And uh, I continued a relation with one of them for a while, just a friendly. Yeah. Uh, so did you get to do anything else while you're in Iceland? So you're setting up the base, you're um, meeting locals. <laughs> I'm sorry? So you're uh, setting up the base in Iceland, you're getting to meet locals. Did you get to do anything else? I saw I didn't get that. It's, were, were you able to do anything else in Iceland? Oh, yes. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we, uh, we photographed a lot. That, uh, yeah, the, uh, the destroyer Kearney, before we were in the war, that uh, was torpedoed. And uh, they brought the sister ship, the two of them, into Reykjavik Harbor. And... Uh, I took a shot of it coming in, and it made the cover of Life magazine. Wow. So I was very, very happy. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. And, uh, and then we also had uh, a bomber uh, crash on one of the uh, hills or mountains of Iceland. We, we covered that. Uh, they, well, this was before we were in the war, but the 
they were trying to get into the war. Yeah. As our government did, helping Britain. Uh, as Britain was in bad shape at that time. And so, uh, so, uh, we did a few excursions around it just to explore. It, uh, there's a, a town beyond Reykjavik, it's, you know, it's Keflavik, and uh, it's like being on, I, I imagine, like being on the surface of the moon, because we leave Reykjavik and you start, uh, you drive, and they look like clinkers, uh, oh, 10, 15 feet high, of this stuff like burnt coal. Okay. And, uh, then we had uh, uh, the other town. The houses were all carricated uh, metal. Uh, men always seemed to wear the boots because it was always wet and sloppy, right. cold. <laughs> and, uh, I, I hope I can find. Uh, I saw one little picture of it, but I had some eight by tens. Uh, with the uh, a decent hut that we, those round uh, yeah. huts, and uh, the uh, trying to, uh, uh, I'm losing my losing myself. <laughs> it's all right. We were so you were just talking about you know, the different things that you were able to do in Iceland? Oh, yes. <clears throat> well, anyway, the nation hut. Yeah. We uh, had uh, our Solitex big sheets of it over one end of the hut. Uh, they were about a half inch thick. Yeah. And uh, we sealed up that door. And uh, the, uh, at night, you hear noises and the rats were running around <laughs> underneath the floor that hit the side of the tent like went by. And, uh, but uh, had this big expanse of a uh, white wall. And uh, so I drew a picture of a girl. And we, we had a, we paid one of the men to keep our stove going all the time. He was one of the privates and he mm -hmm. enjoyed the extra money. And, uh, I forget his name now, but uh, I had him pose in his shorts with his heavy his army boots on. Yeah. And, uh, and I have this beautiful woman, five feet, six feet tall, <laughs> drawn on the wall. And uh, at night, the guys would take a flashlight and shine it down on the wall. As the wind blew, the cardboard would move. <laughs> it was like having a theater. <laughs> yeah. Was, uh, so what what were you doing there? Uh, we were photographing and, uh, of the activities. Okay. What was happening there, and the stuff was sent back to Washington. All right. And, uh, they. Uh, in the beginning, it was very confusing. They would, uh, we were around the place and we knew where we were photographing and the medical supplies would be delivered to the wrong place. And so, and, uh, so we were able to tell people where to go, yeah. pick stuff up. And then the, the general was smart enough to not have us send some of this the photography back to Washington until they got things cleared up. I can see why. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then the, and I, our lab was part of and the, and the headquarters section. Mm -hmm. and we got to know the G2 of the different uh, officers. 
they were very, very cooperative with us and vice versa. They became friends. That between officer and enlisted man. And, uh, then I decided that uh, I would apply for OCS. And I did. And, uh, what was your rank at the time? When you, before I was you... a, a PFC. Okay. I went once, tried. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I applied, and uh, I was supposed to go back, and then I got a call from the uh, colonel. And he said, I got bad news for you, Malcolm. Uh, we were had an allotment of, uh, uh, no, we only have two men. And you were number three on the list. Oh, no. Oh, boy, I just <laughs> I was dying. And uh, so about two weeks later, he called and said, Malcolm, uh, we got good news for you. <laughs> he said, do we have an allotment of uh, 20 men? And you're number one on the list. So don't right. worry. <laughs> Why did you want to go to OCS? Uh, I wanted to be an officer because... Uh, uh, being an enlisted man is not used to it. Uh, you don't have any authority. Uh, you just be put off to do this or that. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to, to settle into a place that I was happy with, like the photography. Yeah. And, uh, but once I got my commission, uh, things didn't pick up too much. <laughs> for a while, but I, it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do because I uh, go to OCS, the commission in the Signal Corps, yeah. and uh, that was all telephone, telegraph, and yeah. intelligence. And uh, here I have a camera, <laughs> so uh, I, and unlike school, I got a, a stack of books about uh, oh, 12. 14 inches high, they're all pamphlets. Yeah. And uh, unlike when you go to college, you skip pages. This you don't. You read every page and have to understand and know what the hell it's all about. Wow. And uh, so I used to spend, and they have lights out at 10 o'clock. And uh, I would be in the latrine until 12. Uh, there's only one bulb still <laughs> working on the damn thing. Uh, I, I managed to to do it. Uh, the only thing that almost shook me was the code. And the did the DOS, and uh, all these guys were just, just got a snap. Yeah. And uh, one thing they said, don't count. You've got to hear the sound. Well, I never heard the sound of that letter. Right. I had to count the dits and the dots, so yeah, I learned to count very fast. Yeah, I bet. I managed to pass whatever the level was to, to do it. So you went from Iceland, was it OCS in Georgia? Uh, no, the OCS was at Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. New Jersey, okay. Yeah. So you went back to New Jersey? We went back to New Jersey. Okay. But, uh, and that was uh, three months. Right. And, uh, that was a, it was hard, but you got into the, the routine. And of course your shoes had to be polished and shined. So if you're smart, you have two pair of shoes. One you never wear, one you just polish and put out of the bed. Yeah. And uh, the restrictions to it, the cots, the blanket that covered the pillowcase had to be in the center of the spring on each side. And That's silly. So I got a gig because I was over here instead of right in the middle. And the thing that they force these things on you just to yeah. make it tougher and tougher. That's right. And uh, finally, oh, the big thing was a math exam. You had to get 85. Uh, or else you got washed out. And washing out was a terrible thing because rumor was that you had sent you to the infantry. Oh, no. 
<laughs> so <laughs> you work real hard to stay out of the entrance. <laughs> uh, but now I uh, and I had a uh, a cold, I thought, and I was had little lavender lozenges that I kept in my pocket, and uh, I didn't dare go to the hospital or the doctor because they would put you back. And I'd gone this far and I didn't want to mm -hmm. lose that time. So I was just really in bad, bad shape. And then finally, when I did to graduate, my mother came down with a car to pick up my foot locker and so on. And I realized that I carried it downstairs, put it in the car. I didn't have a cold. It was all from the pressure. Yeah. The, the psychosomatic, I guess. Wow. Uh, but it was a great day when, when I got there. It, it, it brought your memory, worked on your memory, because that's what it was mostly. Yeah. Uh, I remember my uh, girlfriend at that time, uh, we were going out on a Sunday afternoon, and uh, <laughs> I went to pick her up, and she wasn't ready. And I sat down in the living room, and there was a book, on the, uh, Bronx uh, Botanical Gardens. Okay. And uh, I picked it up, and I started to read it. And I was memorizing all the different <laughs> words, and wow. different flowers and stuff. And it just it happened. It was just. Uh, in your head, it took a while to get out of that. I've lost a dose. Oh, sense, I'm sure. But it's incredible that, you know, OCS. Yeah, well, that was that drive all the time. Yeah. So I, Then I got my uniform and everything. And I, I was supposed to go to the African invasion. And uh, I went down and I got pneumonia, fortunately. <laughs> and uh, they put me in the hospital at outside of London. Was this right after OCS? And I went, yeah, OCS, I went to, right after 30 days. You went to England, right? And then we, I was shipped overseas. And uh, I, I got lost there. The, uh, oh, yes, yes, I, I I went to report it. Finally, when I got out of the hospital, the company that I was assigned to had gone on to, to Africa, and I was sent to London temporarily. Do you remember what the company was? First Photo Intelligence Company. Okay. A photo Company. Okay. First job. Yeah. And uh, I was... <clears throat> I went in to report to the major who was... Uh, an older man. He did, had been an executive at Kodak. And, uh, and here I am, young and full of vinegar, and I walk in, so scared at first report. And I, he's at the desk, and I reported, saluted, and he dropped a couple of papers, and he returned the salute. <laughs> Uh, we talked for a moment. He said, have you ever, the, ever been to London before? And I said, no, sir. And he said, why don't you take the day off and see London? <laughs> oh, boy. So, and that, that, that's, that's really crazy because I went the next morning. He never saw me before. He said, been to London before? No. Take the day and see London. Three times. Finally, on the third time, I said, well, sir, I was here. Yes. Oh, yes, you were. Uh, he grabbed a steno pad, pencil, and handed it to me and said, here, take a letter. I never taken a letter in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the phone rang, and uh, he answered it. And, uh, he turned to me and he said, uh, uh, wait here, I'll, I'll be back shortly. And I sat there and sat there and 
private Celestino, you good Italian boy. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Look, I saw me sitting in there after about a half an hour. I said, you need a desk. Hey, hey, look, that, you need a desk. I thought, so he went and got a desk and moved it up to this big room and chair and so on. And I thought, I never, the major never assigned me anything. He just, he called me in and just told me to do something. He didn't, he didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so I was, pretty soon I, uh, there was a Lieutenant Marquardt, like another second Lieutenant, just the two of us under him. And we, we were across from Claridge's in New York, in uh, London, uh, which is a big hotel there. And uh, our building, we had the lab was in the basement. And then the, uh, about the next two, three floors, we had office space for capturing photographs and so on. And this just keep growing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mark would, uh, would make some mistake. And the major would then give me the, the what he was, he would give me half of what he was doing. So I kept building up. I was lab officer mm -hmm. and assignment officer. You had a lot of jobs. Yeah. And, uh, this went on. And you, you fight your way through and find your spot. And, uh, so I was there on the ground floor. Knew all pretty much what was happening. And then along came, about a year later, uh, a major from New York, or from the U.S., uh, red head, red hair, a little red mustache, and uh, he was a, uh, a real salesman. Uh, he had been successful. His father had a uh, small farm journal, and uh, and they had some little uh, business. And he came in, and by now we had more people, more officers coming in. And uh, this guy arrives, and uh, he's going to take over and command the whole thing. But what he did was uh, he had a desk moved into my office. He spent a week while I'm working here. And then he had a desk moved to another guy, another guy, another guy. And he went around. And uh, after a month, uh, he called three of us together. And he uh, was a little red mustached and laid back. And, uh, he said, uh, I don't know what the hell you guys do, <laughs> but the, the four of you guys seem to know what you're doing. So I want you to take over this, you take over this, so on. And he said, I before, and I'm a second lieutenant. And people that were captains and so on. And he said, I don't give a damn. He said, you guys know what you're doing. You're the boss there. <laughs> Breaking all our rules. <laughs> yeah, sure. What was his name? Do you remember his name? Oh, Colonel Popkus. Okay. Uh, we, Turned out to be friends. Uh, I was Tommy to him, and uh, uh, we, 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 after London and so on, uh, or when the invasion, after the invasion, uh, we moved the thing to to uh, Paris, mm -hmm. and uh, we. Uh, Split up, but uh, he left me in London uh, with another guy to be in command of the, the other half of the battalion while they went to Paris. So this is still the uh, the photo comp What was the operation that Colonel uh, Bacchus was in? Uh, Army Pictorial, which was uh, 
photography, photographing all the pictures you see of the army. Yeah. Or the battles were all done by our guys. 